We are back. Welcome everybody to Cancer Center Live. This is our second season. I'm Allison Johnson, Manager of Communications at Windsor Regional Hospital, and this is a project of Windsor Regional Hospital and the Erie St. Clair Cancer Center. So tonight we are talking cancer-related hair loss. We've got a great discussion for you. We are at Wigs to Wellness in the Mastectomy Boutique tonight, and in just a little while we're going to take a little bit of a tour around here and show you some of the uh, interesting hair alternatives that uh, are out there right now. But first I want to introduce you to my friends here tonight, Andrea and Dr. Carolyn Hamm. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me and hello everybody. As you can tell, I have no hair. I am a three-time ovarian cancer survivor. This is the third time I've lost my hair. And the first time was traumatic. The second time I went very thin and had a comb over. The third time it started to fall out and I took it off. Some people find it freeing. Some people find it traumatic. I would like my hair back now. I'm done treatment. I would like my hair back. <laughs> I'm Understandable, ready. but you look beautiful and thanks for being here with us tonight. And Dr. Ham, thank you as well for being with us thank tonight. Thank you. So I'm Carolyn Ham. I'm a medical oncologist. I've been in Windsor for about 20 years and um, I prescribe the chemotherapy that makes people lose their hair. But we still love her, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to introduce one more guest into this conversation. Everyone, please say hello to Jackie Pizzuti. Jackie is the owner here hello at everyone. Wellness. And she's going to join us later. She's over there with some Happy of her Happy to friends. have you here. So we'll get to the discussion in just a second, but first I want to invite you to join in this discussion tonight. If you haven't checked us out before, Cancer Center Live is an interactive live discussion. So we have some great guests here tonight ready to answer all your questions, but you really drive this conversation. So please send your questions, share any advice you have if you've been through this so that uh, we might be able to help somebody else. If you want, post a picture of your experience. I know we've had some people already doing that out there this afternoon and uh, everybody looks great. Thank you for sharing that experience. Really, this is all about people who have gone through the journey, helping other people who are in the journey or about to, to tackle that. So let's get uh, right into the discussion now. And I want to start with you, Andrea. I met Andrea for the first time last week. And when I met you, the first thing you said to me was, I can't wait for my hair to grow back. I need bad Why? hair days. You need bad hair <laughs> days. Need bad hair days. <laughs> Every day is a good hair day right now. Exactly. Um, yeah, it, you, people say it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to fall out. So you have to make the best of it. You do scarves, you do wigs, you, some people have jewelry and paint their heads. So you can do what you want to make yourself feel good. Um, the hardest part I find is not just losing my hair, it's losing my eyebrows and my eyelashes. It's all the hair? You become a cancer patient. Uh, when you look in the mirror, you see a cancer patient. So um, I've learned to draw eyebrows on, I've learned to use liquid eyeliner to make look like you have eyelashes and uh, I have fun with my scarves and I have fun with wigs. Okay. I have a lot of fun. And I don't know you, if you can see it up this close, but Andrea has really great eyebrows. You've... I've, I've mastered them. <laughs> she's mastered uh, the art of the eyebrowless eyebrow. Yeah, I, I think I have about six left, so, and eyelashes. The, on, the only thing about the hair loss that I want to say is when you start to lose your hair, you start finding it on your pillow. You start finding it on the ground. You start finding it on your couch. And at this point, they've already told you to cut your hair because it's less traumatic when you cut it a little bit shorter. And, but it hurts. Your head, your scalp will hurt. It's like somebody's pulling on your scalp. The sooner you cut it short, the better it is. And you cut it really short and then you can take the rest of it off. Mm. Um, it, it, it makes it easier and it doesn't hurt anymore and throw a scarf on your head and away you go. And we asked um, people out there to share their stories with us and we did hear a similar comment from Teresa Murphy. Teresa, thanks for joining in the conversation with us and her advice to people out there is shave it off before it starts to fall out. And she said that the pain when your hair dies is unreal. And she said it felt like somebody was pulling really hard. Is that the same? Absolutely. It, it hurts. It hurts. And as soon as it comes off, it stops hurting. 
the other thing that she said is that shaving also gave me a feeling of control because I got the hair before the chemo got my hair. So is that something that you found as well? I shaved it off when it started to fall out. So okay. I kept it as long as I could. <laughs> and then one day I was driving the car and I had a piece of hair sticking out and I went, oh, I got to smooth that down. And the whole piece came in my hand and I drove to the hairdressers. And I said, take my hair off, please. That's gotta be quite the feeling when you're holding your hair. Yeah, you just kind of throw it out the car window, so, <laughs> yeah. Well, Dr. Ham, let's talk about uh, the science about this. Why does it happen? Why do we lose our hair? So it's just the way that chemotherapy works. So chemotherapy gets into things in your body that's growing and stops it from growing. And so the things in your body that are growing aren't very many. Your nose isn't growing, so your nose doesn't fall off, which is a good thing. But your hair is growing all the time. And so that's one of the things that stops growing. Your hair, your cancer is growing all the time. So we're going to stop that from growing too. So those are the, the, there's a couple of other things we talk about when we're giving the chemotherapy talk. But that's why. It's because it's growing. And people don't always lose their eyebrows and eyelashes. It depends on how fast yours grow. The ones that grow fast will fall out. Ones that grow slowly won't. Okay. And we're calling tonight's topic, Hair Loss, the Second Big Blow. And because what I've heard from you out there and from different people who have been on the show before is that, you know, the diagnosis is the first big, you know, hits you hard. And then you start to feel good and feel like, I can do this, let's do this. And then the hair loss is kind of an unexpected blow. Even people who said, I thought it wouldn't bother me, felt that it did bother them. So how do you, what do you say to patients or how do you help them prepare for that? I don't know. There's a good way. I usually have some Kleenex on hand. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard. And it's hard for men, too. It's hard for everybody. If a man has a good head of hair and he's losing that, he's pretty sad, too. Um, there, isn't, there isn't an easy way. You, I basically tell people exactly what you've just been talking about. You know, get it cut short when you know it's falling out, and then it's easier to lose short hair than long hair, but it's still... It's traumatic. Yeah. Yeah, there's no it's way Were you surprised it. at how you felt when it came out, or was it kind of what you expected? The, the first time it fell out, I was getting ready to go to a function, and I was getting dressed, and my husband said, you have wads of hair on the back of your shirt, and I didn't know it was coming out at that point, and I sprayed my head so tight with hairspray that night, <laughs> and the next day I went to my sister's, and between a couple glasses of wine and a pair of scissors, we took my hair off. And it was, uh, it was a crying, drinking wine kind of night. And this time it wasn't that hard. It just, this time I knew what to expect. I'm the, I've done this three times, so I knew what to expect. But I am ready to have it back because I don't have cancer anymore. And when I look in the mirror, I see a cancer patient. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the hard part is, is this is what I see. I can put the wigs on and I don't see that person. But when I get up in the morning, I see that person. And I again, I first met Andrea last week, but your hair is already longer than it was last it week, is. right? I it's have starting to set. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we have a couple comments uh, from Facebook. The first one from Morella. Morella says, you're such a strong woman. I assume she's talking to you, both of you really, but uh, thanks Morella for joining. And Martha says, keep up the good fight. So thanks again and thanks for being here and thank you Martha for that. I've got a couple more um, items from Facebook that I pulled here. The Andrew will be familiar with these but she didn't know that I had them printed and hopefully you can see them. If you can't they are on Facebook. This is a, a picture of Andrea and her best friend that she posted on Facebook and this is a picture of uh, Andrea's <laughs> husband here and <laughs> <laughs> rock in the wig here. Oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand these back to you and yeah. tell me these pictures. What are we looking at here? Um, the first one is my best friend Karen and when I got diagnosed she shaved her head and unfortunately I lost her to pancreatic cancer last year and when she, I shaved her head and I told her that if she thought I was shaving my head, she was nuts because I wasn't doing it. <laughs> I'd already done it once. So she did this for me though. That was seven years ago. I've been doing this seven years. So, And my husband, I was having a very, very rough time the first go around. I was having trouble with chemo and he, I had a, a couple wigs and he put them all on, went in the bedroom, took his picture and I got to the chemo suite and these were all around my bed the day that I went to the chemo suite. There was about five or six of them <laughs> hanging out for everyone to see. So I love this one. Absolutely. And he looks great with that hair. Too. Yeah. Well, we still have ginger. That's ginger. <laughs> 
So, and that kind of leads into another point. How important is it to have people with you through this part of the journey? No, oh, it's very important. He makes me feel good every day. My sister, my mom, everybody that has helped me through this. We, we've, we've been hit pretty hard in my family with cancer. So, um, yeah, it just, uh, you need the, the support, your friends. And does family treat you differently when no, not my family. Your hair, no? No, no, not even, not even my grandson. He just kind of went, oh, grandma. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Checked out my head and away we went and he hasn't said a word since, so. I will say though that in the, our social work department, there some people it is hard for their kids to see their mom with their hair loss. And so we have um, dolls where the hair comes off so you can have the conversation with the kids just in case um, oh, that okay. they might help. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you also, Dr. Ham, if you go online and you search, um, as I have been preparing for this show, and you search cancer hair loss, you can get any number of tricks or items or things that promise to help not make that happen. Um, what are your thoughts on, on those different products out there? Yeah, so there are things called cool caps, um, and there's two products out there. They're quite expensive. and. The, the the literature is not strong in its how well it works or um, uh, uh, or it's it, how well it's tolerated and it is expensive. It, I think it's about three thousand dollars to to get a cool cap. They're hard to put on. If you don't put them on perfectly, you're gonna still lose your hair. Um, and one of there was two trials, small trials, only about one hundred and fifty people in each trial. And um, in one of the trials, women got chemo where they may not have lost their hair anyway. And so it's a little bit iffy, the benefit. And so there aren't many places um, in established centers, even in the States, that use this routinely. And so, yeah, that goes on your head while you're going for the treatment? Yeah, that's what I understand. I don't know that very well. I have never used them. So I understand you put it on. I think you start an hour, at, half an hour before, and then you wear it for, for a period of time after. Um, are there any risks to trying something so, like that? I, I think the biggest one is for uh, bloodborne cancers like leukemias and lymphomas. You don't want to decrease the blood supply to any part of your body, so that's what that's doing because that could allow the leukemia lymphoma to survive in that area. So you don't want to do it if you have those bloodborne cancers. And, and that is a little bit iffy since we think now there's new studies coming out looking for cancer in the blood in many different cancers, breast cancer, a lot of arms. And so there is a concern that, that you could kind of give a safe site for the cancer away from the chemotherapy with the cool caps. And there were a lot of vitamins that were recommended okay. also online. Is there anything that you would feel comfortable recommending? Um, I don't know of any vitamins that help, but I know um, when I was in the States, I worked with a, one of my patients worked in a dermatology office. And so they, she, they use a lot of um, um, biotin. Yeah. Yeah. And that 3000 milligrams a day. And it did help fingernails and nails grow back in. So that's the only thing. And as far as I know, it's safe. I have used it for a long time. Uh, my hairdresser recommended that to me one time and I had wicked eyebrows for a little while so it did work for me and really quickly. Where do I buy it? Drugstore? <laughs> yeah, anywhere. And the, so the, uh, it's not like perfect. No. no. <laughs> but um, it's, um, uh, I think natural food stores and at that, when I, I was using a lot in the States here, they only had 300, mil, 300 milligram pills so you had to go to the States to get it before. So, so Andrea, I wanted to ask you do you feel that there's a connection between looking good and feeling good at as you're going through the journey at the different stages? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. If you if you can alter the sick person, if that's the only way I can say it. Um, with the and I know you're going to lead into the program. Look good, feel <laughs> look good, feel good. We might mention that. <laughs> um, I find that if if I if I put makeup on and I make myself look a little better and I never wore makeup before so I mean a little mascara and a little lipstick and I'm out the door now I actually take the time and I do my eyes and I do my eyebrows and I put lipstick on I feel better you know I just yeah and on um, chemo days no I mean the days after chemo there's nothing that's going to make you feel better and you could in fact at that point you're underneath a quilt and you're just laying on the couch and you have your bucket beside you and you don't need makeup you don't that. need makeup for that but no 
But you did mention the program, the Look Good, Feel Good program, and that's a program that is offered at Windsor Regional mm -hmm. Hospital. And actually, there was Andrea who mentioned this to me last week, and then I went and, and found out some more information about it. But this program, it's... Um, it's available in Windsor. It's also available in other communities. So if you're watching from anywhere else in Ontario, I encourage you. We're going to post the link after. Um, go look it up. Apparently, they teach you different makeup tricks, different eyebrows, different ways to wear your your wigs, your Scarves. your ties, but also a, a lot of free products involved. I heard there. So if if the other stuff didn't entice you, maybe maybe yeah, that. skincare is huge. Skincare is big, and they teach you how to take care of your skin, which you wouldn't normally have to. But that's all part of this chemo and dead cells and killing cancer cells. And skin grows fast, so it kind of goes after your skin too. So. And and probably a good opportunity to meet other people who are at the same stage going through the same you do. journey as well. Yeah. And you share. I mean, I went through it twice, once seven years ago, and I felt that I earned the, the right to go through it the second time. And I was able to help other people. I I like to help other people. So I was I was telling Dr. Ham, I, my last chemo treatment, I was teaching a lady how to tie scarves. I was walking <laughs> around with my chemo pole showing ladies how to tie their scarves. So... And in just a minute, we're going to get to a demonstration of that because apparently it's it's hard to get on properly and Andrea's mastered that. She can do it on her own, but we're also going to have uh, Jackie show us some different ways to do that. But first we have a, a question for Dr. Ham. Um, this one's from Martha. Thanks, Martha, for joining the conversation tonight. And she wants to know, she says that when uh, she lost her hair, her head was colder at night rather than in the day. Um, is that common and why is that? Did you find that, Andrew? My head's always cold at night. Hence, I more wear, than in the day. I wear these. Yep, yeah, I wear these at night. I think it's probably just because when you're sleeping, you're not as active, so your body's not making as much heat, and we know we lose a lot of our heat through our head. So, but that's when your body slows down. You're not your metabolism slows down, and so it would feel it would feel colder because you're just not as active, probably. And this is your night hat then to keep warm. Why well, it's my everything hat. It goes under scarves and okay. Um, this is actually a modification. This came from the cancer center and it had, it was for nighttime and it had nice pink lace on it and I took the lace off because I, I use it as a, it holds scarves on and it's cotton so it absorbs sweat and stuff like that because your head does sweat and, and especially mm -hmm. if you're out in the sun and, and that. but it, it helps hold if you have a silk scarf on it helps hold silk scarves on. Oh perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Martha, for the question, and thanks everyone who's given us questions so far. Before we go any further, I just want to encourage anyone who's out there tonight who has a question. We've got some great resources here, a great combination of experience and expertise, and we're going to uh, move on to another part of our conversation very soon. But I also want to mention that anybody who does join us tonight, anybody who's posting their questions, their photos, you're going to be entered into a draw for an opportunity to win a copy of this book, Healing Pretty. Uh, witty and wise empowering you through cancer treatment. This talks about different uh, things that you can wear on your head or ways to feel comfortable, but it also covers a number of topics that really um, can help people feel good and look good while you're going through this journey. So I want to, can I have a commercial? Yes. So I just wanted to talk, talk a little bit about one of my patients that's done some really cool stuff with her her bald head and <laughs> she has a YouTube can I do it now for sure this uh, is very cool um I have so she oh, I just moved so she um she is an artist and this is her picture this is one of the many things she's done with her head and she has a YouTube uh, site called stuff on my head Carrie and she said she we could share that and so Beautiful. she's got all kinds of other things there. It's truly worth investigating and just having a little fun. She's got some very pretty little head dressings she wears to the clinic as well a lot. I just wanted to mention that, that you can get creative with it and have just, I think creativity is important. It, it is. is an opportunity to be more, to deal with it. I just want to say one more thing in terms of quality of life for the people in the cool cap studies, their quality of life was no different if they lost their hair or didn't. So it's just it's something to keep, and this was randomized, and this was honest. So it's really something to keep in mind. Is um, it's, yeah, it's tough. It is really, really hard for sure. But if you still had your hair, your quality of life would not likely be much different. I think it's harder for young girls, like in their teens and in their twenties, oh. 
because their hair is their identity. Um, if you look at Jackie's wig, she has a lot of wigs that are geared to the younger girls. And losing, I, I don't know whether I could have dealt with it as well in my 20s now that I, well, I, I'm in my 50s, whatever. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm, I, I am. I've made it to my 50s. I've yeah. made it seven and a half years, yeah. which I, I, I'm not supposed to be here, but somebody thinks I should. So, um I don't find it as hard. Some of the other girls, um, Daniela, who donated the gong, she said it was very freeing. She was mm. quite, she had no problems going bald. She said it was like freedom and away you went. And I don't see um, a difference between the younger and older. It's, no. I think it's no. very individual. Right. How comfortable are you sitting here right now with nothing on your head? Um, and now I'm fine. I'm talking so... You know, I, I ramble, so hey, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, would I go to the mall like this? No. Would I go out in my backyard? Absolutely. In my yard, my neighbors all know that I don't have hair. And would you so. wear sunscreen out there? Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> when my, that you, funny that you say that, when I took my hair off, I had a big brown line right down the center of my head where I'd been tanned on my part line. Oh, wow. And, and, and it was the first time the hairdresser had ever seen it, and she said, you have this big brown line, and I said it's a tan line. <laughs> That's hilarious. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to uh, take the conversation on the road a bit right now, and we're going to introduce you to a woman who uh, has made a career out of making people look good when they may not be feeling so good or at a difficult time in their journey. So welcome, Hello. Jackie. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Allison. Thank you so much. Great to have you here today. And Thank I just you. want you to uh, tell me about this place that we're at right now. Oh, and yeah. how did you get into this? Well, I'm living my dream. Um, we're at my business, my home business, Wix to Wellness. And um, I was inspired 16 years ago. My sister had cancer. And she had a bad experience when she was shopping for her wig. And she came to me afterwards in tears and it broke my heart and um, I had already I always had kind of a fascination with wigs anyway and I'm a hairstylist by trade and I thought one day I'm going to transition and and work myself into this business and um, I found my way when I met my husband Joe the Canadian because I'm American maybe if you, you can couldn't tell, tell by my voice <laughs> And uh, anyway, so yeah, when I when I married Joe and moved here, it my dream. And it is became a fabulous a place. It's really Thank warm. You. You've done a lot. How do people approach this? Um, their first time coming here, and what advice would you have for people um, who are just starting out? Yeah, well, I see a lot of anxiety, and um, my main purpose, what I really want them to know anybody who's new with this is that it doesn't have to be a horrible experience and so many women have fun with it they bring their friends they you know we've had wine parties um you know it it it, it can be really empowering mm -hmm. yeah and you mentioned before it depends on what stage you're at or how you're feeling when you get that's to this right point. yeah yeah so um it I, i'm so happy you're doing the show because it's really underrated. Hair loss is really, really underrated, and it's devastating for most women. And uh, so when they come here, they don't know what to expect, and they're filled with anxiety. And um, what I want to do for them is to bring them to that comfort level. And when I sit them in my chair and I start trying things on, I just see uh, just a sigh of relief from them. So it's, as soon as so, the, the hair goes on, they yeah, they look and they realize at that moment, like you know what, this is going to be okay. In fact, I look really hot <laughs> because you would, right? Like nobody in here yeah. other than is having a bad hair day. Yeah. All of this looks yeah. pretty good, mm -hmm. right? If you, if you have to. Of course you wouldn't yeah. want to. Oh, yeah. So many times I hear women say, you know, oh, my God, I wish my own hair was like this. And, well, now it is for a while, right? Yeah, I was saying I'm going to take one yeah. of these to uh, my hairdresser. Sorry if you're watching, Christy. Yeah. No, you do. <laughs> but uh, this would be just an easy thing to show. So tell me what we've got going on here. And so, okay. Yeah, just a few different types of wigs. Is this okay? Standing here? Yeah, for so sure. So I wanted to show uh, the synthetic type of wig, which is the most affordable. And then over here we have a synthetic and human hair blend. 
And which and is when you touch this, it's my favorite. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just so silky. So that's a blend. And that's a blend. This so you synthetic. can do you can do anything to this that you can your own hair. You know, you can flat iron it, use a, a curling iron, whatever. And this is a human hair wig, one hundred percent human hair wig. Um, they're they're wonderful pieces, but very very costly. So uh, the, the blend is a nice happy medium. So the cost differs depending on how much synthetic hair is involved? I'm sorry? The cost varies depending on how much human hair is. is yeah, there. yes, yes. So what would this one, what would a human hair wig uh, You're like? looking, well I have really high quality wigs, so you're looking at uh, 2000 plus. Okay, so we can get yeah. expensive. And we were talking about this earlier and I said, oh, that's interesting because I know people donate their hair. Yeah. So that's strange to hear that it goes for so much. So yeah. why is that, that the human hair costs? Um, because the hair that's donated, um, a lot of people don't realize it, but it, it is completely nonprofit. Um, I send my hair donations to Mississauga to Angel Hair for Kids, and um, it goes to children for free who have uh, cancer or hair disorders like alopecia. Okay, mm -hmm. and you said you send your hair because you also take donations here, right? I do, I accept donations, yes. So anybody who has a hair donation, they can bring it to me and, uh, and I'll see to it that it gets in the right hands. All right, so we've got these fabulous looking wigs here, and I love that Andrea has names for hers. What was the, what was the one? It was Ginger. Ginger, yeah. <laughs> is that red? No, well, she's kind of blonde. <laughs> oh yeah, her. she's cute. Yeah. Now what about these other um, items here? So these are just other hair alternatives. I mean, not everybody wants to wear a wig. So um, I offer at my boutique a lot of pre-tied um, pieces. Oh, because, so that you would just slip on? Yeah, because a lot of women, they don't, you know, they, they feel they can't be tying things. And uh, although I will show you how easy it actually is, but um, all of the ones that I sell are really pre tied. Yeah, and these are um, these are called chemo beanies and um, designed by cancer survivors from California. And it kind of gives you a little feeling of hair. It's a little ruffly in the back, right? And I'm looking at the material. Is there a certain material that people prefer? Um, my favorite material, and it seems to be the favorite amongst all of my clients, is the bamboo. And cool. they're just yeah, they're, it's very breathable material. And um, it's uh, it just feels nice and soft on your head. It's you know really really comfortable. And there's a lot of different style bamboo uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. So this one is these ones would be the longer. And these are now these are the scarves that you know I you can just pull out of your drawer or borrow from a friend or whatever. We all have them, right? And I'll show you on... Let's invite Andrea over. Andrea did say that on her last chemo treatment, she was helping other people in the chemo suite to tie their, their scarves. So she's gotten pretty good at this. Um, but we're going to have Jackie do a, the demonstration right now, so, just in case. Okay. And I actually do... I, this is just a bandana with a white cap underneath it, and it's easy. You can pre-tie it. And while you're getting ready there, Jackie, uh, Facebook's sending you a little bit of love here from Wendy. Wendy says, Jackie, you are a beautiful person uh -huh. and you have helped me so much. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm sure Thank that there's you, a lot of people that uh, would say the <laughs> same. You. And Martha agrees. She says, Jackie uh -huh. was a fabulous help. So and uh, Thanks, Martha. Love you. And um, Lisa says, Jackie's my hero. Uh -huh. So three thumbs up there Thank for you. Jackie. Okay. Thanks so much. Um, okay, so this is Andrea's stuff that she brought, and she came up with a nifty little idea. Um, I know about this idea, and what I suggest is a shoulder pad, but not all of us lived in the 80s, right? So not all of us have shoulder pads anymore, I hope. Anyway, um, she just took another one of her little pieces and folded it up into a little square, put it in a little plain cap, and... We're going to put it on her head and what this does is it just creates a little height okay because sometimes you know you're it's we don't look good with a flat head <laughs> not that my head is flat <laughs> i thought you looked great with it them. it just it just adds some, you have volume so. to your hair it adds volume to your head hmm. 
Was that something that you discovered on your own or something that someone I told you? I found about? it on YouTube literally a couple days ago. And oh, I wow. never knew it. I was trying to figure out how to tie this really big, long scarf I had. And uh, I YouTubed and somebody had this idea and I went, what a smart idea. Definitely. So. Okay. So this is the shape of this particular scarf. And it's a and dollar sure, store car scarf. Yeah, you can get these anywhere. So one of these. So you're going to put this on. You're just going to center it. And, you know, leave a little bit of that cap underneath out. And now I'm going to just turn you around. Okay, can you see? And then we're just going to tie it one time around like that. And you have a cap, right? So now with this, you can do whatever you want. You can just make a nice bow. You can pull it around like this. Come around to the side. <laughs> and have a little kind of florette thing there. Or you can just wrap it around and just keep wrapping and then just tuck in loose ends if you don't like any kind of frilly thing. And if you and have brooches, you can pin the brooches on. And if yeah. you're going out somewhere fancy and you just had a black scarf and you put one of, mm. um, I want to say one of my mother's brooches because those beautiful star opalescent brooches look gorgeous on them. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And I see what you mean about the height there. It does yeah, make a difference. It does. It, it does. It does. It gives you a little bit. There's also a really interesting thing at the Look and Feel Better uh, that has to do with opaque pantyhose. So we'll leave you hanging on that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you want you to know what to do with your pantyhose. pantyhose into a really cute little headpiece. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Did you have anything else to demonstrate here? Um. No, I don't think you so. Do. I, I think like your Halloween it. one there. You got it for oh, the seasons, right? And you're matching did. the other. This came from the Cancer Center. Yeah. The ladies, um, there are volunteers that make these. These are wonderful. To all the ladies that make these, I love you. They're just a simple triangle. And literally, you, you put it on like the scarf you used to do when you were a kid. And tie it in the back. They have them in all colors. You want to see it? And you can tie it in a knot, you can tie it in a bow, and it's not the over-the-shoulder bow to hold her. I thought you were going to start singing. Yeah. <laughs> no, these things are wonderful, and I actually took the pattern from this, and I went to the fabric store and bought all kinds of summer fabric for the summer to go bright colors, and I made a bunch of them, and I don't sew, and I was able to, you can do them by hand. They take like two seconds. This is just fun. It is fun. That's fun. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, thumbs up to the Women in the Cancer Center yes. who uh, make yeah. these and, and yeah. gave yeah. Andrea the idea yeah. for the pattern there. Oh, I, was gonna say, I, go, I, I do have wig. hair. Yes. I do have hair. So we, put it on we, have, we have to show the real hair. This okay. is your... This is my hair. Can I show you how to put a wig on real quick, real yeah. the best way? Bring it all the way down to your brow bones. That's how you're going to get a nice firm grip. Then get aggressive with it. <laughs> Pull it all the way down to the nape, and then what you want to do is just slide it. And that's how you're going to get a really good grip on the wig, and I'm used to having a mirror in front of me. General rule of thumb is pinky at your eyebrow and four fingers, and that's where that hairline should be. And then there's two tabs on each side of the wig, and they always need to go temple to temple. Now, how do we look here? <laughs> and then there, you look beautiful. This is the one that looks most natural for you? Pretty much. You feel most Went yeah. after I got my hair cut. Yeah. yeah. Does yeah. it have a name, this one? No, this no. we didn't give any more names. The Andrea? Yeah, the, yeah. the, the names came because of a Sex in the City episode uh, <laughs> where Samantha goes to get a wig and she said, why do you name all the wigs after strippers and hookers? Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's that's... That happened at about, I was watching that about the same time I was first diagnosed, so it was kind of a joke. I gave them all names, and now we just, now we just wear them. <laughs> well, thanks uh, to Andrea and Jackie for the demonstration. I think that that was great and really helpful. Thanks, and we are Allison. going to head back over here to the Cancer Center, and if anybody has any last questions, we're going to wrap up the discussions. So please, if you have any questions for any of these fabulous guests, please get them in now so we can get to them. 
We do have a little bit more that we do want to talk about though before we leave tonight. We've talked about uh, the hair falling out, but now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the hair growing back. That looks really nice. That one really does suit you. This there. is me. That is you. This is me. So, Dr. Ham, when the hair starts to grow back, how long does that usually take? I usually have the rule of threes that I usually tell people. Like, it usually starts falling out three weeks after your last first three weeks after your first chemo and starts mm -hmm. growing back in three weeks after your last chemo. And then by three months, usually it's enough that you don't have to wear your wigs anymore. It's a little short. Usually it's like baby hair. It's super soft. Everybody wants to touch it when it first comes in because it's so <laughs> soft and feels so good. Do you and let people touch it? Oh, anybody can touch everybody it. Lets you touch it. <laughs> everybody lets you touch it. Can yeah. I touch it? Oh, yeah, because it's really nice and soft. Yeah. <laughs> it's like baby hair. My problem is it's white. <laughs> but it's probably a beautiful white. Quite yeah. a lot of women, when they grow their hair back in, they you know, you yeah. colored your hair your whole life. Not, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> but And then all of a sudden, you, you find out what your real hair color is. And it's like, a lot of times, it's this gorgeous white or gray, a beautiful gray. And a lot okay. of women just leave it. The but hard part is you too. can't color it, and they tell you that. They tell you to wait a year to color your hair, to not damage it. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, that, that's hard. That's hard <laughs> if you want to go back to, because this is the color that I've always worn, and my hair is white. But my, my son told me that I rocked the white, so I may be getting it white. So yeah. yeah. So and how long did you leave the wig on while it was growing back? Uh, once once it's covered my scalp, the wigs were gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were telling me it grows in flat. Mine grew, grew in flat, and then when I and I tried to spike it, it would not spike. It wouldn't do anything. It was flat to my head. And then when um, it started to get some length, it got very curly. But after the first haircut, that was the end of my curl, and it went back to the way it oh. was when I had it before. So I wasn't fortunate enough to keep the curly hair. Again, that sounds similar to yeah. baby hair, when it grows in curly, yes. and then first haircut, and it, and it disappears. And the curls are gone. What are you wearing? Um, I'm going to ask you to uh, explain that after. Jackie, actually, why don't you explain that now? Uh -oh. Jackie was talking about, and we talked about the cost, and uh, she's going to explain the image enhancement in the, in the wigs that are available. Okay, so I just wanted to let women know that um, not, not everybody has the means to get a wig and the Cancer Center Foundation and myself uh, team together and we provide a free wig for any woman who needs it. So we feel that no woman should go without and you're going to come here just like anybody else and you're going to get the top treatment and we're going to get you looking good. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's a great program and thank you for providing that mm -hmm. information. And we'll provide links to the different uh, topics that we were talking about tonight so you can get more information on this program and the Look Good, Feel Better program and also the, uh, the Cancer Center. And people need to check their medical coverage because, uh, like, I have coverage for wigs. A lot of places do have coverage for wigs okay. within their medical, their Green Shield or Blue Cross or whatever it may be. So I've got uh, some questions coming in now. One for Dr. Ham. This is from Lisa. And we talked about that it, your head hurts. Lisa, thanks for joining us tonight. But she wants to know why her head hurt before she shaved it. Yeah, I don't, you know what? I never, I, I didn't realize that many people have had that. I haven't had a lot of people complain of it. So I actually don't know why your head would hurt. Do you have an idea? I actually do know. Okay. Um, the hair follicle dies and it's... So you imagine millions of hair follicles in your head and they're all pulling on the skin on your head and they're all pulling mm -hmm. on your scalp. So just like as if somebody was pulling on your hair, all those follicles, because if you run your hand through your head and you come out with a handful of hair, that's all dead. And just imagine all that weight pulling on. Yeah, hmm. Tiny little pulls. Everywhere. Yes, everywhere. There you go. Yeah. Does that come on suddenly? Uh, it, yeah, pretty much. You you start losing a little bit here and there, and then all of a sudden you're losing a lot within a, a couple of days, and and then your head. One day you wake up and your head hurts. Okay, that is interesting. It's something I had never heard of either until we started talking this week. This uh, question here is about hair dye too, and you did mention um, it's a year that was recommended to you. Um, do you know why? You just don't want to damage the hair follicles. Um, 
some people don't wait and it doesn't do anything. I don't think I waited quite a year. I think I was like 10 months and then I was So how did you hear that from? Your hairdresser? Uh, hairdressers, I think I was on, um, I belong to a teal warrior site and an ovarian cancer site and they, we kind of share information and. Because I actually tell say. people to go ahead and dye their hair. Well, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I've never heard that there was a problem, and I can't say any of my patients have had trouble with it. So. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Cause... <laughs> I think that hairdressers must see a lot, too. And I was talking about this with my hairdresser just today, telling her that we were going to do this show. And she was saying, you know, yeah, we do see that in here. And, I mean, cancer is so common. Everybody knows somebody. So, of course, she's going to have patients. And just the different approaches to that, too. Like you said, some people want to have the party and some people want to have a quiet uh, and some people come you know right in like you said and I want it gone now mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm sure that and and Jackie you probably know this too that you do see a lot yeah. and there's no right or wrong yeah my hairdresser was actually on vacation when my hair fell out and I went to my mom's salon and um, I, I have to give them a shout out to hair mechanics because they were awesome I walked in I said who I was I said I was Gail's daughter and I needed to get my head shaved. And she said, well, do you want to go in the back? And I went, no, it's okay. I don't mind no. being in front of everybody. She was so sweet, this girl. And um, literally, they they just said, um, have a good day. And I walked out the door. There was no charge to take the hair off my head. Hmm. They treated me beautifully. She was so gentle. And, um, yeah, I just they were just sweet about it. And they were more worried about my feelings. And I just wanted it off at that point. I just get it off, so... That would have been your second time or your third time? This was the third time, so, yeah. Uh, one question here from Wendy. Wendy, thanks for your question. Not so much about the hair, but she wants to know how long does it take for the chemo brain to go away? And P.S., you look fantastic. Seven years, I'm still dealing Seven with it. Seven years. <laughs> it's not chemo brain anymore. <laughs> Just when it, you start getting better, it came back again. So yeah, you've been yeah. Uh, hit a few times. Yeah, I've been hit a few. Times. I've had twenty rounds of chemo. I think the literature kind of says a couple of years, and yeah. I think it's just that you've been your every couple of years. I recur. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, usually uh, the literature looks at a couple of years before you start getting your memory back and stop using so many post-it notes and you know try to start remembering stuff more easily. Alarms on your phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> and that's usually the worst. Hopefully that doesn't hit everybody. But it's harder, I think. I, I don't know. It seems to harder for younger working women because they have to be thinking, you know, if you're retired and, you know, it's not as important. It doesn't hurt as much, I think, the chemo brain but, or affect your lifestyle as much. And you said younger women. What about men? And you talked about sometimes men... Um, get upset when their hair falls out. But Jackie mentioned when we were talking earlier, she's not seeing a man in here looking for a wig because of cancer. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is it maybe more acceptable for them to, or they get comfortable? It's probably easier for men to lose hair because there's so many men without hair. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my husband lied. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I think, but there are, I have had men that have been very traumatized at mm -hmm. losing their hair. So it's to keep it in mind. There is an upside. And you kind of miss the upside, especially if it's summer, you're going on vacation. If you don't have any hair, you also don't have to have bikini waxes. <laughs> hair is universal. Um, so, so you've got the really... So, and you know those odd ones that grow up here? Well, they, they're gone too, at least for the time being. So, and, and on that same line, you've saved a lot of money on... Yeah, I don't have to shave my... I haven't had to shave my legs since June, so... Um, yeah, you know, hair, but it also falls out your eyelashes, your eyebrows, but the hair in your nose and the things that you wouldn't realize that are important. Actually, that is really important, the hair in your nose and your eyelashes keep stuff out of your eyes. And I find I get a lot of stuff in my eyes now uh, because I don't have as many eyelashes. I think I have six on each one. So Things that you wouldn't really consider. Things that you don't consider with hair loss, but they affect, um, I constantly have, my nose is running all the time because I, yeah, I get no so much stuff in my nose. Yeah. So. We've got another comment here. Uh, I don't know, there's no name on this one, but uh, she says there is another upside to wearing a scarf. Customs waves you through no questions. <laughs> I don't know about I'll that. I'll find out Friday. <laughs> yeah, I play that card. <laughs> I might shave my head just for that reason. 
So I think we've all learned a bit tonight, and I want to thank our guests for being with us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you to joining us. Uh, producers over there, do we have any more questions, or did we uh, get to everybody? All right, well, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us tonight, and I think that uh, tonight I also want to uh, mention, I think we can't do a Cancer Center Live tonight and not mention uh, Gord Downey for our, the Tragically Hip who passed away today. What we like to do on this show, what we like to say, that this show is about people helping other people, and I just saw his uh, documentary uh, a couple weeks ago um, about the experience that he was going through with the concerts, and that really gave people an eye into what it was like working with cancer, and I think that that's what we try and do here, and thanks to everybody who continues to share their stories to help make the journey a little bit easier for others. So cheers to Gord. Cheers to you guys, and I look forward to talking to everybody soon. Thanks.